Historical events that encourage the rapid development of aviation in America at the cost of safety. A presentation by Jason Rivera. In a period of only 117 years, a handful of generations have witnessed mankind conquer the skies. In just over a century, aviation has advanced from glorified wood and canvas kites to a jet age where a single airliner can carry as many as 853 passengers across an entire ocean in just over eight hours. The rapid development of aviation is one of the great wonders of the modern world. However, this advancement in mankind came at a cost. In this presentation, we will explore three events in the history of aviation which compelled the rapid advancement of aircraft and inspired air crews to push themselves and their machines to the absolute extreme. In all three of these events, the safety of air operations was compromised in favor of performance. We will examine the lessons that those who laid down their lives left as a legacy. The Airmail Experiment, 1918 to 1921. Necessity is the mother of invention. As human beings, we have evolved to manipulate our environment to suit our needs. When we are confronted with a problem, we invent a solution. But this was not the case with the discovery of flight. When Wilbur and Orville Wright discovered the secrets of powered controlled flight, the world did not know what use to put the flimsy wooden canvas contraption to. The Army saw the potential for an observation platform, but the general public saw the airplane as nothing more than a curious novelty. It can be argued that the biggest motivation for the early development of the airplane in America, outside of World War I, was the decision to use it to deliver the mail. This decision not only jumps our aeronautical advancements, but encouraged the training of pilots. While the early airmail service did accomplish this goal, it did so at the cost of any concern for the safety of the pilots flying the aircraft. From the years of 1918 to 1921, the U.S. airmail system was under the supervision of Otto Prager, who believed that mail delivery by air was no different from mail delivery by ground. Prager's neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom of night mentality along with his competitive desire to outperform the railroads, would lead to the deaths of 27 pilots in only a three-year span of time. The fatality rate during Prager's administration was 1 in 400. While it is easy to place blame for the abysmal fatality rate of Odo Prager's leadership, the truth was that aviation was still in its infancy, and very little was known about human factors or the dangers of flying in IFR conditions with limited instrumentation. Many pilots were killed in accidents which were seemingly caused by simple pilot error. One such incident involving the death of William Lewis was caused by a stall and takeoff. This is still a very real danger in general aviation to this day, and the loss of William Lewis should stand as a warning to GA pilots, young and old, to be particularly diligent in monitoring their airspeed. The Thompson Trophy Air Races, 1929-1939 there is no period of aviation that compares to the extreme advancements in aerodynamics, aircraft engines, and airframe manufacturing techniques than that of the Thompson Trophy Air Races. When the races began in 1929, Doug Davis won the race with a top speed of 194.9 miles an hour. Only nine years later, in 1938, Roscoe Turner won the race with a top speed of 283.4 miles an hour resulting in an 88.5 mile an hour increase in speed over the course of less than a decade. The Thompson races saw advancements such as advanced streamlining, retractable landing gear, a general abandonment of biplanes, and extreme improvements in engine performance and dependability. Some of the Thompson Trophy air racers were indeed so dangerous that they earned a reputation for being pilot killers. One such aircraft, the GB, was little more than an enormous engine with stubby wings and a tiny tail attached to it. The pilot was crammed into the tiny racer's tail with the intent of being used as ballast to offset the weight of the 450 horsepower Pratt & Whitney Wasp Jr. engine. It was short coupled, had very poor visibility, again the pilot was in the tail and had to look over the massive engine, and worst of all, notoriously hard to control. But who cared? It was fast, and that was the only thing that mattered. The speed over safety mentality would claim the lives of two pilots, Captain Arthur Page and Doug Davis, earning the races a fatality rate of 1 in 37.5, the third highest fatality rate in aviation history, 
beaten only by the Thompson Trophy Air Races 1946 to 1949 and the attempted crossing of the Atlantic 1913 to 1927. In current day aviation, there are strict regulations that aircraft manufacturers have to adhere to in order for their aircraft to be certified as safe to fly by the FAA. Even today's air races are strictly regulated and closely inspected for safety. The World War II Daylight Bombing Campaign as conducted by the 8th Air Force. It is a sad truth that the greatest contributor to aeronautics in the 20th century was indeed World War II. While the egregious loss of life is by far the greatest tragedy of our time, it cannot be denied that aircraft saw extreme advancements in performance, reliability, and overall capability. The daylight bombing campaign was started with the intent of destroying key strategic targets which would impede Nazi Germany's ability to wage war. The newly developed Norden bomb site would allow the 8th Air Force a level of precision which was unprecedented, and being able to systematically destroy selected targets could deliver a winning blow. It was believed at the onset of the campaign that the B-17s and B-24s onboard armament of machine guns would be more than adequate for the bombers to defend themselves, and air crews were sent into combat without a fighter escort. During the summer of 1943, bomber losses were higher than 10%. German interceptor pilots were able to engage the bomber formations without any opposition, and the bomber's armament of machine guns did little to avail them of their aerial tormentors. It was not until the incorporation of the P-51D Mustang in November of 1943 that the 8th Air Force was able to reduce losses to about 3%. The B-17 was to receive improvements as well. A remotely operated chin turret with twin 50 caliber machine guns was to replace the single 30 caliber gun. Also, the waste gunners would receive a plexiglass window to shoot from, replacing the blustery and extremely exposed open bay. While the daylight bombing campaign against Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany may have only come in fifth place as having aviation history's highest overall mortality rates, it comes in first place in terms of total lives lost. The 8th Air Force lost 26,000 airmen during the campaign. Each crew member had a 1 in 144 chance of being killed. This being an average, the mortality rate at the beginning of the campaign was much worse. There is absolutely nothing safe about what these brave men did for their country. Flying into enemy fire is always a dangerous proposition regardless of the safety precautions taken. In spite of the inherent, ever-present danger, these men simply did what needed to be done, and in addition to the geopolitical benefits their sacrifices wrought, aviation technology advanced a tremendous amount in spite of their ordeal. It is difficult to draw a modern parallel to what these aviators did. I suppose if we were to learn from them, it would be their steadfast obedience to following regulations. Even when they were being shot at, these brave men followed their standard operating procedures and checklists. In a world of marginalized safety, they focused on the factors that they could control. As we look towards the future of aviation, it is important that we not forget the past. There are always parallels that can be drawn when deciding how to proceed forward by observing where we came from. We must work hard to find and learn from the lessons that need to dictate our future development as aviators, not just to ensure our own safety, but to honor the memories of those who gave their lives in pursuit of this amazing and exciting industry.